Hi, and welcome to Geno's Picks. I know, one in three last week, only the second time all season. 19 and 18 on the year, only 51%. I know we need to do better. But if you're here for the money, are you watching us on Sportsbook Review? We're 75% against the spread with Thursday Night Football. We went 77% last week against the spread with NCAA. So really, if you watch these for money, we're giving it away at Sportsbook Review. And if you're here for the comedy, Daddy is giving you more hits than Ray Rice on an elevator. So let's get right to it. But first, you know what really grinds? my gears yeah this week something does and it's Andy Dalton that stupid ginger and his Bengals that cannot be trusted when it seems obvious they're going to win that's it from now on the only ginger I still trust is my nephew because unlike Andy Dalton everything I do he seems to think is the most amazing thing ever what'd you do last night Uncle Gino I slept in my car that's unbelievable that's right let me tell you something about Andy Dalton and his stupid Bengals they should change their name to Cougars because they cannot wait to you. See, I made him bleep that out because I'm not going to say fuck in front of my (laughs) N-E-P-H-E-W. Right now my nephew's giggling. (laughs) All right, let's get to the picks. My first pick, the Colts are getting six from the Falcons in Atlanta. Hey, here's something you may have missed worrying about the fact that backup quarterback Matt Hasselbeck is starting. That it's actually a good thing because the guy doesn't turn the ball over like Andrew Luck. And Atlanta needs that help considering how terrible they are with time of possession. Hucklebuck, as my brother calls him, is 2-0 as a start of this season. And there's a very good chance he'll wake up 3-0 Monday because people have been paying so much attention to how much Luck has struggled of late that they haven't noticed how downright terrible the Falcons Falcons have been all season. Did you know that since starting at 5-0 against teams that all have losing records right now, they have lost three of their last four to teams that are just as terrible. In fact, if you take the NFC East out of their record, they're a 2-3 and three team that just can't finish drives on offense. This team has had so many drives stall on offense, they shouldn't be called the Atlanta Falcons. They should be called the Millennium Falcons. Take the Colts and may the force be with you. My next pick, the Ravens are laying two to the Rams in Baltimore. Yes, the Ravens have struggled, but the terrible Rams offense is coming to town, and now Case Keenum will be under center because Nick Foles is god-awful. His last name shouldn't be Keenum as much as it should be Close because when he replaces you, the argument over whether you are an NFL QB or not is officially Case Close, and Foles is not. He was far too conservative, never taking shots downfield, leaving things bottled up for Todd Gurley in the backfield. Well, now Keenum is there, but that's not much better. Because going from Foles to Keenum is like going from condom to bareback. You're taking bigger chances that will most likely end badly, and you'll have no one to blame the next day when you hear people saying, that case is absolutely terrible. (laughs) Take the Ravens, lay the two. My next pick, the Broncos are getting one from the Bears in Chicago. Really? The Broncos are underdogs? Why? Because they suddenly have a QB that's perfectly suited to a run-oriented offense like Coach Gary Kubiak loves to run in his system? Or because they're facing a QB in Jay Cutler that's associated with nearly as many ridiculous turnovers as his wife Kristen Cavalieri used when she got cast in the hills? Three of their five losses have been straight up and against the spread when they're facing top five NFL defenses, and now they face... The number one defense in the league. Wow, we're finally going to see what Denver can do with a real Bronco at QB in Brock Osweiler. Unlike Peyton Manning, who looked terrible last week, and how could he not between his ribs, his quad, and his foot injuries? It's a good thing he's not a real Bronco, or they would have shot him behind the stadium after the game. And none of these are as bad a problem as the fact that he's admitted he can't feel his fingers, which in this cold weather is the kiss of death. The only thing his throwing hand is good for now would be giving himself the stranger. (laughs) which he's going to have to do because the NFL is done stroking Manning. The Brock Osweiler era starts Sunday in Chicago. Take the Broncos and the point. Which brings me to my double your money Monday night betters. I like to call it screw you, Dalton. The New England Patriots are laying seven to the Bills at Foxborough. Look, the last time these two teams played in Buffalo, the Bills lost 40 to 32 in a game that wasn't even close. And now that the Patriots have time to study Tyrod Taylor, you don't think they found 18 more ways to stop him? Not to mention Belichick is going to use last week's close call against the G-Men to have his team focused because they know they got lucky with Tom Coughlin's again, Joe again terrible time management and the only difference between that game with a second left and a second after it ended was that people weren't yelling watch the clock sucker at Coughlin the Pats are focused and the Bills are getting blown out those are Geno's picks